Hi guys, today we are going to talk about pricing conventions, discounting and arbitrage. Fundamentals of bond valuation. There are three steps involved in valuation of bond. First is estimating, uh, estimating the cash loss or the life of the securities. Second is determining appropriate discount rate. Third is calculating present value of estimated cash flows. There are two cash flows that can happen in the life of a bond. One is coupon payment, the other is return of principal. Determining the appropriate discount rate based on the risk of the securities and risk of precept of estimated cash flows. And we will have to multiply uh, the bond's cash flows by the appropriate discount factors. Like this is the process of getting uh, the valuation of a bond. For discount rate, uh, if you take the treasury bond, we'll be taking a uh, risk-free rate of return. And if it is treasury securities other than bond, we'll be adding risk premium to risk-free rate of return since uh, there are other risks involved like credit risk, liquidity risk, etc. So we won't be taking risk-free rate. We will be adding a risk premium to a risk-free rate based on evaluation. Calculating the value of a coupon bond valuation with single yield so consider a security that will pay 100 rupees per year for 10 years and make a single thousand uh, dollar payment at maturity in 10 years the appropriate discount rate is 8 percentage for all the cash flows find out the value of the bond this is actually simply the sum of present value of future cash flows there are two cash flows involved one is the principal payment at the end and the other is the annual principal annual coupon payments that we are going to get just make the present value of all these cash flows we will get the value of the bond so it is 1134.20 if you work out that is the present value of expected cash flows which is the value of the bond so valuation with a single yield and semi annual cash flows so in this case what we will do is rather than 100 per year we will take dollar 50 every 6 months that is half yearly and we will adjust the discount rate to 4 percentage rather than 6 percentage so it will be like 50 by 1.04 plus 100 by 1.04 uh, raised to 2 like this it will go up to uh, 20 times because there are 26 months period so it will go up to 20 times and we will be finding out the present value expected future cash flows price yield curve bond values and yields are inversely related this is because if the discount rate goes up then the present value of cash flows expected cash flows will go down so the value of bond goes down and if the discount rate goes down the present value of expected cash flows goes up and the valuation of bond goes up so this is called a, this is a price yield curve that is shown here so uh, the change in bond value in response to change in discount rate can be calculated as a difference between the present values of the cash flows at two different discount rate that is being shown here if you see this graph as the discount rate goes up the value of the bond decreases and as the discount rate goes down the value of the bond uh, increases this is because the inverse relationship between bond values and bond yields because of the discount rate factor that affects the expected future cash flows discount factors and arbitrage discount factors are used to determine present values in this topic there are three topics to learn subtopics to learn discount factors for treasury bills discount factors for uh, treasury bonds and determining value using discount functions discount factors for treasury bills treasury bills are securities that mature within one year its crash price is given by cash price is equal to 100 minus qn divided by 360 uh, q is equal to quoted price and n here denotes number of current lender raised to maturity so uh, essentially this q is actually the annualized discount of the treasury bill the quoted price is referred to as this clean price because it does not contain this uh, accrued interest uh, cash price is dirty price because it contains accrued interest we could calculate the cash price based on both uh, bid and ask rates and the midpoint of these two will be our discount factor discount factors of treasury bonds 
Treasury bonds are securities issued by government to finance their mid-term and long-term needs. If you see, they promise stream of uh, future cash flows as principal and as uh, interest. If you are considering a bond with a coupon of 4.25, uh, maturity November 15, 2019, the price of that bond is 109.5. To find the discount factor, what you need to do is you have to find out the interest. The interest for half yearly period that is 4.25 percentage divided by 2 into 100 would be 2.125. The current cash price of bond is 101.5 which is given. So this discount factor would be 101.5 divided by 102.125 which is equal to 0 0.9939. So for the second year we already know that the discount factor of first year is 0 0.9939. To find out the discount factor of year 2, we will have to uh, multiply that, not the year 2, the period 2, uh, we will have to multiply that with the interest rate of that period, that is 3.625, which is nothing but uh, half yearly coupon of 7.25 into 0 0.9939 plus 103.625, that is the uh, that is uh, the interest into the interest rate of that period which will be uh, 103.625 which is nothing but the interest calculated as given here plus 100 rupees so we'll have to calculate for here also we for arriving at 103.625 we'll have to calculate like 3.625 percentage divided by 2 into 100 which will give you 3.625 Two five added hundred to that will get one not three point six two five into discount factor two. That is the discount factor of period two, which is equal to one not five point nine eight, which is given. So the discount factor comes around zero point nine eight eight zero. So the finding out of uh, for finding out our uh, discount factors for treasury bonds, we'll have to go by this criteria since uh, this has a different uh, coupon rate and it is not discounted also in the case of treasury bills it is discounted so the discount factor is readily available using the formula which i have told in the earlier slide determining values using discount functions in this topic we will learn what are the arbitrage opportunities that we can gain using uh, bond pricing so here law of one price is important in Instruments with identical future cash flow should sell at same price. This is known as law of one price. If the investor are able to exploit a mispricing because of the law of one price, it is referred to as an, as an arbitrage opportunity. So if you see, uh, there can be two uh, bonds in a market which has a similar cash flows, the end cash flow and also the in between cash flows, which is nothing but interest. If you find those two similar uh, instruments which is trading at a market at a very different prices then it is against law of one price and in that market we can exercise an arbitrage opportunity so short positions are important consideration for arbitrage so i'll explain to you what is uh, short position short position is nothing but uh, selling a stock which we don't have if both the identical cash flows have both the bonds have an identical cash flows we will have to short sell the expensive investment and buy the uh, cheaper investment what we usually do in the market for arbitrage is sell the uh, higher price thing and buy the lower price thing so similarly we, we here has to have to short sell the uh, item for the arbitrage item in the sense the bond okay short selling uh, is like uh, uh, if we sell a uh, security now, we expect it to uh, decline in value so that we can repurchase it as at a lower price on a later date and we can sell it back to the purchaser whoever we have borrowed the security from. It basically involves, involves borrowing the security from a person who has the security and later on returning it back to him at, after buying it at a very lower price. So that short selling is a technique when we use when we expect the market to fall down 
okay not the market the security maybe so uh, what happens is in short selling if uh, the investor if investor has invested in a bond paying 8% of uh, coupon then if the coupon payment comes in between we'll have to pay that coupon payment back to this holder of this bonds so that is one thing we'll have to take care in uh, short positions so it is a most important consideration while doing an arbitrage selling short selling a position uh, is one step in uh, arbitrage dealings okay so if you see this example so observed uh, bond yields and prices so one year uh, is four percentage by tm zero coupon 96.154 is a price like this three prices are given and they have said like the two year spot rate is uh, 8.167 okay is there an arbitrage opportunity if they describe the trades necessary to exploit the arbitrage opportunity in this case i'll tell you there is an arbitrage opportunity because they are only providing eight percentage coupon for two years so uh, at the two years spot rate is trading at 8.167 so these bonds are trading rich trading rich means at a higher uh, level so what we'll have to do is we'll have to find out an opportunity to do find out a way to have a arbitrage opportunity here so how we do that is like this there are uh, three steps here uh, one step uh, step one is buying a stock buying 1 million of uh, um, buying 1 million of two year eight percentage uh, coupon bonds as they are uh, trading cheap then short sell uh, short sell 80,000 of one year zero coupon bond at 96.154 short sell 1.08 million of two year zero coupon bonds at 85.734 if you see the amounts two year uh, 1 million 80,000 and 1.8 million 0 8 million can be changed according to you the only thing is that you will have to find out an arbitrage opportunity in that this figure does not represent anything and we don't have to do anything with that it is these buy short sell and short sell that is required for us to find out the answer here so we will have to see if you see the cheaper securities which are there uh, uh, which are there we have bought and the which is not cheap which is expensive we have sold okay since we have found out the discount factor is 96.1154 and 0.85734 by using the previous slide if you see the previous slide it will be um, given like the price of the bond for one year would be 96.154 by divided by 100 we will get the discount factor so multiplying it with the principal that we want to we have bought then we will get the uh, price the amount we need of money we need to pay or receive at the beginning of the investment if you see the step one goes like buying 1 million of two year eight percentage coupon bonds because they are trading cheap see if time zero we bought that we will have to give away 1 lakh rupees and 80,000 coupon will come at year one and one uh, 10 lakh 80,000 uh, rupees will come at year two since we have bought at time zero so at time zero by uh, short selling uh, our 80,000 of 80,000 dollar of uh, zero coupon bonds at 96.194 will be receiving 76.923.20 that we have found out using our discount factors and we'll be losing 8 to 80,000 at year one with, because we are left to sell it back to that person so we'll have to uh, give the money so here we'll have to pay 90, 925.927.20 at the year beginning uh, uh, we'll get from that person because we are short selling that and at the end of the year two we'll have to give 10 lakh 80 thousand so if you see at the net if you see the net position will be uh, at the year one itself we'll be getting 2850.40 and here year two will be zero because year two we have uh, got 80 thousand and we have uh, from that uh, the second short selling we'll have to pay 80 thousand so nil here we'll get 1 lakh 10 lakh 80 thousand since we have bought 1 million 
after two years uh, we'll get one ten lakh eighty thousand and here we'll have to pay ten lakh eighty thousand since we have short sold one lakh uh, one point zero eight million at the year one here for that discounted price using the discount factor so this is how you we use the discount factor to find out the uh, the outflow and inflow at the year one so that we can find out the arbitrage opportunity at the year one itself year two we'll have to make we'll have to make adjustment in these three one million eighty thousand and one point zero eight million dollars so that the year 2 and year 1 cash flows are zero that we will have to make accordingly uh, we will have to just check what is the coupon payment at year 2 so that coupon payment year 1 that coupon payment should be uh, the short selling of one year zero coupon bond so that at the year 1 also there is no outflows so for whichever question we will get we will have to do accordingly so that we can find an arbitrage opportunity here pricing bond components and, and pricing zero coupon bonds are issued by treasury is called uh, strips so the full form of which is separate trading of registered interest and principal securities the bond is stripped into two components principal p strips and coupon c strips if these the price of these strips changes then diverges then there is an arbitrage opportunity Constructing a replicating portfolio. For constructing, why do we need to construct a replicating portfolio? It is because a trader can um, conduct an arbitrage trade by purchasing undervalued bond or starting a replicating portfolio that mimics the bond value of cash flows. If you don't find uh, any undervalued bond of similar cash flows, like we have already seen, uh, we have done arbitrage using similar. Uh, cash flows but different prices but if you don't find like that then even if you think that there is an arbitrage opportunity we can short a replicating portfolio that mimics the bonds cash flows so finding that we'll have to take an example we'll take a bond with a face value 100 and which is paying 10 percentage coupons 10 annually and uh, which also has a ytm of 4.5 percentage if you take uh, the cash flows the value of the bond trading would be at uh, 110.41 can taking 5 percentage coupon at uh, 4.5 percentage semi annually and uh, discounting it three times for uh, four times you'll be getting two year uh, the value of two year bond at 110.41 dollars so for uh, mimicking the portfolio we'll be taking these four uh, coupons uh, coupon bearing instruments which will be always always given so if you take a uh, seven percentage coupon giving instrument of 101.22 so these are the instruments like this there are four instruments so these are the instruments we are going to take so for mimicking the clash flows one one cash flow is equal to f2 f2 is the face value face amount that we are going to face percentage that we are going to take into seven percentage by two plus f3 into uh, 12 percentage by 2 f4 into 5 percentage by 2 f5 into 6 percentage by 2 like this we will we'll try to mimic the cash flows this f5 into 6 by 2 should be equal to the last cash flow that is 105 so uh, face value the amount of face, uh, uh, amount of um, uh, face amount that we are going to take the percentage of face amount that we are going to take is fp2 fp5 that should be equal to that into the uh, rate it is trading the coupon rate should be equal to 105 so it is 100 plus 6 by 2 uh, divided by 100 is equal to uh, it should be equal to 105 then what is f5 f5 will be equal to 101.94 so like this we will find out f5 f4 f3 and f f2 based on the cash flow this is the first cash flow that is 105 so equating that with the last last leg of this and equating this leg with uh, the second cash flow like this we will be uh, computing all the cash flows and we will try to mimic the cash flows for mimicking the cash flows if you see the last row of this table bone one cash flows is tallied 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 105 which is same as the cash flows of the bond if you see the bond 2 which is 7 percentage coupon the face amount that we uh, get by 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 doing this exercise is 1.73 percentage 
which will be 1.7906 will be the cash flow that we are going to get at the uh, year one year not one uh, period one that is 0 0.5 here if you see the last which we have computed and kept which is 101.94 we will be getting 105 at the uh, a cash flow at the year end if you have invested 101.94 percentage of bond five so like this we will be taking the percentages and we will be calculating how much we need to invest in a particular bond so that yearly the coupon payments or the uh, coupon payments and the principal payments uh, gives us the total result to uh, the total result to mimic the cash flows of our original bond one so accordingly we will create a portfolio and selling and buying this portfolio at these percentages will give us the same cash flow and this can be bought at a cheaper price as compared to uh, our original bond then we can sell and purchase these shell uh, short sell and purchase these bonds in this given ratio and we can earn money means an arbitrage at 0.0 Pricing convention between coupon dates. Uh, first, we'll have to discuss what is a dirty price and clean price and accrued interest. Uh, dirty price is a price that seller of the bond must be paid to give the ownership. Uh, it includes accrued interest also. Uh, it, accru it includes price of the bond plus accrued interest. The clean price is dirty price less accrued interest. Okay, accrued interest is an interest earned between coupon dates. For an example, if you take a uh, thousand rupees par value US bond, 10% each coupon, and assume that uh, the coupon was paid 90 days ago. So, and there are 30 days in each month, compute the accrued interest. So, uh, it, before 90 days it was paid, so 90 days interest must have accrued by now. So, the coupon payment for thousand dollar par US at 10% semi annually will be 50. So, 50 into 90 divided by 180 that is semi annual payment 180 days 360 half yearly of 360 is 180 so which will be around 25 rupees 25 dollars so that is all about this small topic this is the uh, decon conventions it is there are several decon convention not these three these three are uh, used most commonly actual by actual in period actual by 360 and 030 by 360 so in in us market they use 30 by 360 for uh, treasury bills so this is most common method actual by actual is uh, 365 and number of actual days actual by 360 is actual number of days maybe 31 32 30 by 360 assumes all the days in uh, a month is 30 so this is for the calculation of accrued interest and nothing else so these are the conventions that has been used um, so that's all for today thank you for patiently listening thanks all